Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Marijuana Essay Weekly. I'm Andy. And I'm Dean. And today we're talking about root aphids. But before we get to that, we are proud to introduce our first ever sponsor of Marijuana Essay Weekly, NordVPN. So if you are ever in need of a VPN to make sure that your web browsing is encrypted, or if you want to access content on Netflix in other countries like USA or UK, sign up with the link below. You get a super cool discount for using that link. Back to the show. Today we're talking about root aphids and uh, Dean you've had a big issue with some root aphids uh, lately and I've got a couple things I want to ask uh, so yeah what why don't you int- introduce what happened exactly yeah so as it goes with growing as soon as you think you're on top of your space you just get hit with another blow and it's a <laughs> constant learning curve so yeah uh, basically what happened is uh, I was busy with some really important work quite recently I was running a uh, uh, an elongated hydroponic uh, styled uh, grow, uh, testing out the Lumi black uh, LED and uh, was dealing with quite a influx of, uh, at that time, what I thought to be fungus gnats. Uh, I didn't notice sort of anything in the sort of at, mm. at the base of the, of the plants. Uh, I didn't really, uh, well, I misdiagnosed uh, to, to be honest and, and treated according to, to fungus gnat as I usually have done in the past. Uh, it's generally something that sort of does pop up a bit in my, in my grow space. So I wasn't really too worried. A uh, couple of weeks later, about around week four of flower, this fungus gnat uh, infestation had reached all time swarm levels. It looked like uh, <laughs> the mozzies were rising off a still lake uh, every every evening. And uh, yeah, a couple of days later, I actually d- didn't know what to do anymore, was struggling, was getting quite worried because it was the grow series and you know I really wanted mm-hmm. it to be successful. So I thought, let me just put it out to the community. Uh, put it out to the guys on Instagram, had 40 replies and uh, only one of those read all of them long paragraphs that people were writing and one of the 40 said, bro, I think you've got root aphids. So I was like, quick Google, uh, hopped onto the oh, channel, shit. actually <laughs> uh, hopped onto the channel, went to the video that we done, done with Mike from Kaya Farms on identifying uh, common pests and then mm. went onto the one on how to deal with them and realized that in that episode, Mike actually says, you know, it's a common mistake to mistake adult root aphids with fungus gnats because both of them have black bodies, both of them can fly. Uh, And yeah, long story short, realized in that moment that I had the mother of all infections, uh, took to the tray at that point uh, and had a look at the tray and the zombies were swarming. Uh, so I tried to wash them out with like a- waiting agents and try to sort of uh, deal with this very, very advanced infection at that stage. And from uh, sort of to, from noticing or correctly just diagnosing to maybe four or five days later, the plants had taken a turn for the worse and mm. decided to, in that moment, scrap the go- grow and restart. Uh, but yeah, it was basically a case of a misdiagnosis and then, uh, yeah, having to deal with the after effects of that accordingly. Yeah. It's a bit of an easy one to, to misdiagnose, like you said. Um, so in terms of like someone that, uh, you know, running their grow now, like what are they, what exactly can they do to make sure that they don't make the same, uh, mistake? So I think the first thing to do is to invest in some yellow sticky traps or some fly traps. Uh, it's not going to, what you use that for is obviously to catch any flying insects that you are going to find in the space, but also what they're really good at. Once you've obviously caught those insects on the fly trap or on the sticky trap, you can go up to it and you can inspect it up close and actually look at what you're dealing with in your grow space. So for someone who, for any grower who's growing outside or, you know, outside in maybe a tunnel or inside in your tent and you're uh, worried, you know, and you're wanting to sort of know what kinds of bugs are in the, in the space, that would definitely be the first way to start to sort of prevent and identify. And then after that, you know, making sure you have uh, something that can combat uh, said root aphids uh, in your IPM or or that's or you know in your IPM uh, processes. So uh, 
what I wasn't using in my space. Uh, I was using a lot of sort of uh, organic insecticide, a lot of Jadam wetting agent, uh, but none of those things are going to penetrate into the mm. substrate and uh, and sort of attack the, the root aphids where they're actually thriving. Because what they do is they will live along the roots and they look literally like black little ticks that will sort of form these long, hundreds of them will form along the roots. And then as they develop and breed under the roots, they'll then eventually crawl out and then they'll grow wings some of them uh, i think it's the male or the female one of the two will grow wings then it will fly to another spot and then boom you've got another infection there so uh treating with something that can actually drench into the soil mm. is is important um like i did say which is also important in this uh particular case I was uh, doing an elongated hydroponic grow. Um, it's, uh, you know, I've been doing a lot more hydro recently, but it's uh, over the last couple of years, I've been sort of, I've, I've spent more time on the organics. So rookie error, not using a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in my, uh, in my reservoir as well. I didn't have enough hydrogen peroxide. So it was basically just like no natural competence because it's just a cocoa perlite uh, and then nothing to sort of hold them at bay. No, uh, no bacterias, no hydrogen peroxide. So at mm. the end of the day, I created a basically an ideal breeding environment for mm. <laughs> <laughs> for for root aphids by not having the correct uh, the correct IPM. Is there is so is, it sounds like the prevention is kind of the same as treating it because uh, that was bringing me to my next question. It's like how do you cure something? But like maybe if you're not in such an advanced uh, phase of it, you know, if you're sort of just just now diagnose that you've got a, a subtle uh you know very juvenile infestation uh what could uh what could the growers do best so what i'd do first is i would do a big clean um you know clean your tray clean out your reservoir i would uh up or introduce some hydrogen peroxide into the into the substrate uh, to kind of sort of uh, you know eliminate as much as possible and then what i'd also do is you could start to build up uh bacterias which will start to which will start to defeat them uh neem oil is very good at uh sort of uh reigning in the 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 population a bit mm -hmm. neem you can also use as a as a soil drench so the neem you can introduce a neem soil drench and maybe sort of wash it through the substrate and that should should hold back the population quite a bit and then using uh, some bacillus or some bavaria uh, 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 bacteria products like pest pro or uh, disease pro from ecobuzz uh, or the margaret roberts uh, organic uh, caterpillar killer all of those products will be able to you'll be able to feed them into your substrate as well and that will also then to start create a bit of to create a bit of a bacteria network that should feed on and or hold back the infection uh, you'll have to treat this throughout sort of the remaining period and if you have, have picked it up and it's still very early on it's manageable but uh, mm -hmm. also maybe after running that whole grow i would reset those substrates as well i would mm -hmm. potentially not risk reusing them i just dumped you know i i managed to save my mom's uh scrap the scrap the flowering tent i've noticed it in the flowering tent first noticed it on my mom's second in my clones third so <laughs> scrapped all the clones uh threw away like a whole bunch of clones um chopped new clones uh, treated the mothers kept the mothers isolated waited for the new clones to root then i inspected all the clones physically uh did a dip of all of the jiffies replanted those and put the moms outside and then washed everything in the grow space down with bleach and hydrogen peroxide, reset everything. So it was basically like a massive reset, but that's on a worst case, uh, on a on a on a case where you it's very early on and you've just started to notice it. You know, just upping your your uh, above mentioned uh, IPM products should really help to keep them at bay or keep them under control. And then obviously just constantly monitoring your your sticky traps as well. Mm -hmm. guys as we've always said ipm is a uh, you know prevention is always better than a cure uh it, it is one of those difficult things and of course uh, diagnosing uh it does happen i mean this is such a, a easy one to to mix up but yeah hopefully you guys learned something today uh learned from the mistakes that we have uh learned over the <laughs> over the years uh <laughs> yeah so you guys don't have to and yeah that's it from us until next week peace guys peace guys <laughs>